Financial Affairs Committee meeting to order. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Ms. Manpower significantly, and it takes a 
lot longer for them to do that. That's just one example. Um, we get to, to if we ever have to, today we had to um, make a repair on a uh, sewer line. So we got to get deeper than we normally would. Sewers are usually below the water line. So in order to, of course, to quickly and safely work around those clay sewers, the hydroback truck comes into, into play every single time. So um, for us to safely work around these utilities, uh, from our experience, and one of the biggest reasons why we were so successful in the past is because we heavily utilized that equipment. And at this, at this time, when the RFP documents were drafted, there's no exclusion for utilizing hydroback trucks to facilitate our work. Um, we included on our equipment list, we included uh, that we have two back trucks available. So we, we right out of the gate, we uh, we alerted everybody to the fact that we'd be using hydroback equipment. And so essentially, <coughs> we got to a point where um, we don't totally understand everything that's going on outside of our work or what other contractors are doing. But what we know is our plan was <coughs> to use hydroback equipment as just another means for removing ground, removing earth from the ground for us to replace the line. Was it more, did it cost more than what you had did to work around? It cost us substantially more to do our work. No, I mean, us. when you submitted your bid and this was included, you gave it cost the city no extra money. There's no extra charge for us to, if we have the back truck in place. If we have the back truck in place as part of our, as one of the tools in our toolbox, <coughs> we, we wouldn't charge any additional money um, to utilize that equipment. That was That's how we built our bid. That's how we built our bid. So, go look in the other direction though, when that, when that tool is a means and method. So, we write a spec, or a spec, spec is written and we, we bid to it. We, we bid to it to do the work in whatever means we need to do the work in within that specification. And there's nothing in that specification, in that, in that request for pricing, that says you can't use this piece of equipment. So, if, if the request comes later, we deem that to be a change in the contract condition. And and so it's fair enough, and we, and, we, and we comply with that okay. change. So what were you told when you received this? Um, well, so this was dated July 9th. We, we haven't had any communication or, or um, as far as cost, you know, we've just been instructed to not have the truck out there. Did you have we, any work that uh, that was used that you were not paid for? Uh, just, yeah, yes we were. The first day of the contract, and I can, I, I can pull dates on that, but the first day of the contract, there were 15 addresses uh, that we utilized hydroback equipment, and we were not paid for that work. Thank you so much. And, and, and to clarify on that, there was some miscommunication on the first day between A.D. Kalangoya um, for why that's not, that hasn't been paid, so, and we're working through that. Okay. So, um, I wrote the name down, but I, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm trying to pay attention to him. I promise you, anybody else has their name, hands up, I will write your name down. Mr. Mays, you were first. I do also want to get to any time and any questions. So, yeah, based upon the special order in the on the agenda, please work. And then it refers to service line my evening when I read it. That's correct. Okay, and so, Mayor Weaver, that's coming from your office to see the work for For the hydro. Yeah, for the hydro bank. I'm familiar with it, Mayor Weaver, but my position is that I'm taking a position that just as you heard Corey has referred to it, I'm not just going off of what they say, I'm going off of what I'm looking at. As a matter of fact, in front of my house today, they were, um, there at 125 East Road. So I watched them. And I've watched too many of them. I go out periodically. I disagree that you can't use a hydro back to suck up water and dirt and also to um, keep from damaging a sewer line. And so I'm hoping the administration will change their position on using that as a tool. I look at hydro back. Several, a 
asshole or whatever. There's times when that particular equipment can be used. Um, I look at the standards set by the American Water Works Association and others when we talk about 2018 best practice. Hydro back is one of the best practices. Now, when I look at what caused this cease work order, Mr. Guerrero issued a statement echoing what Rich Baird said in the um, Friday meeting. I'm, I hear what Rich Baird said. He really ain't said nothing one way or another to me to the middle of the road so people can interpret it the way that they want. I won't probably rest or sit still until I see hydro back accepted in 2018 for some way of getting. It's only a two. If, if, if like in my yard, when they looked at 125 East Russell, they dug around the um, curb bottle, and then they went about two feet under the sidewalk with a shovel. That shovel and that work could have been done with a hydro back. Water started coming up when they got so far down. I wanted that water sucked stuff out of there um, once it got to a certain point. So that's my appeal to the administration. If 10 or 12 or 15 lead lines were discovered, because people didn't dig four feet or ten feet either way, then the order should be simply dig four feet or ten feet either way, regardless of what tool you use, a backhoe, a shovel, or a combination of the two thereof. And that's my position. I, I, I want the mayor or somebody on the administration, if somebody convince me, that hydro vacuum can't be a tool. Am I missing something? Um, so this is your friend. May he? Yeah, can you please um, make a, you know, tell who you are with? I'm, I'm look at I'm just so, so, so let me just put this here. So, so let, let me, let me, I think we're talking about two things. While we, while we came, so we have passion. So let me just say this. We're going to address that. Mr. Gilchrist, we are, we are not going to veer too far off. I was getting ready to reel that back in. I don't want to turn it into that. This was very specific, so you are correct. Well, let me ask and so, a point of information. What is this specific to? Because if it's a cease work order for Goyette as written, that ain't happening. They are working. But, so what are we veering off of? Councilman and, May, and, and what I didn't get to get to is Goyette sent this document. Are you, Mr. Gilchrist, did you guys receive a copy of this document from Goyette? You have AECOM, you guys have received it as well? Okay. And so, specifically for me, um, they were sharing that in order, they, now they're continuing on, but in order for them to do what they bid out to do and to stay within that purview dollar-wise, that this was included in their bid. And so since the city is in essence taking away a tool that they said they could use to be more efficient in what they were doing, my question was, if, if we're taking away that tool, have we won, won why, if it doesn't have anything to do with, I know that the hydro backing for other things, they're using it for something different, it's not costing the city anymore, it's included in their bid, and, and why can't they use it? And then two, if we're not going to let them use it, have we looked at their proposal from July 9th that says, if you're taking that tool away from us, it's going to cost us more money. And so what happens when the city changes a bid based on other things that are happening? What is the liability for the city? And what do we have to do to make sure our contractors can fulfill the contract they were given? That's what my Madam special Madam order was for today. Madam Madam it's tough, Sam. But based upon your special order, that's my position. Only you know what your special order is. That's what I told people repeatedly. That's why I ain't tripping. Whatever your special order is, it is. But if 
if it ain't the discussion, what I heard Goya and others talk about is in relation to beef work or the hydro bank. I have no problem sitting here discussing that all important issue to 530 and flipping through the other agenda and trying tripping. But now that he's up and I'm hearing the scope of the special order to change, I'll wait to hear from him, but if we will allow, I think, to be on the track of what this is all about. What is it? So tell me one more time, what did we hear for? I think, did you understand, Mr. Wilson? I want to understand. Time. Time. Well, I want to understand, so I can stay on track. So they've been told that a piece of equipment that they used to be efficient, the hydro track. whatever it is. Oh, okay, I'm right. right. Let's see if we're that here. Okay. That's what I was on. I don't know how it's changed in the scope of anything on this special order. Well, but this anything. is specific to what? the Goyer contract That's right what, now. Okay, because well, we'll use Goyer as an example. That sounds good. Okay, fine. So, Mr. Gilchrist. So, again, thank you. Thank you for that. So, and so to, and I think that Mr. May was on the point when he said that uh, we have not stopped a seat order to them to be able to do the work that they were contracted to do. They don't have no hydro back contract. They have an excavation contract that, that entails uh, what they are doing. They're doing it every day. Now, in the contract, they did submit those things that they said that could, that could be used, but their numbers are not predicated upon saying that here's the tool that I got to use to make these numbers work. It's not, that's, that's not the way construction works. When you, when you, when you ask for your submittals or what have you, it, 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 it falls in the line of a qualifier to, to tell you what it is that you got to show you that you qualify to do the work that has to be done. Does not mean that you're saying that this is what only this tool can only be used uh, 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 for my bid. That's just not true. And so if I think that we've had this conversation with, uh, go ahead and uh, decide this today. We've had this conversation, and that and that and that uh, he conveyed to us that his hydrographic piece is being used for to explore uh, utility. That's what Ms. Digg does for us, for them. They come out and point out where the utility lies. They don't even have to back in the do that. It's not true. And then, and then, and then when, that was, when, that, when that was said to us, okay, we, we, we use it for that too. Then we come to learn, uh, calculate, calculate, that that was not true. They went out and these guys, told them, then they would have the back. And then billing us for uh, traditional excavation and, and, and for, for, for hydro back and pipes. That's the end board. And so, uh, and, so, and, so, and so that's so when you so when you ask you know, a question about about uh, having been paid, we also have the stuff there as well because we don't we don't want to pay them for you paying a hydro back contractor hundred and fifty dollars and you, and, you, and they want us to pay them Sixteen hundred and thirty dollars. We're not doing that. And so and so if we had expected we'd ask them, Madam Chair, not to do that. And they tried to slip and do it anyway. So now you're not, saying there's some fraudulent Madam activity Madam going Madam on with our no board board board. Board. Didn't, didn't you give me the flow? It's tough being a champ. It is. You did give me the flow. It is. When did I give you the floor? When I called Mr. Gilchrist. That's what we do. Right. I know it's tough. I guess you can go ahead, but I'm still at the floor. But go ahead with your line of question in that comment. I know it's tough to hmm. Okay, so so it seems like we're getting into some deeper waters to me with your um your friend. So what you're saying is, well, I'm just saying based on the record, you are saying that there is what is being said by Goyette and what is being billed to us is not in line with the scope of their contract, which means that that is false information. What is your point of order? What is your point of May order? I follow up with my question? What's your question? You're right. I mean, you were saying it. I could have been quiet. You said it. You got issues here. We asked two, three, four weeks back for the end copy of the invoice, if you recall. 
I'm knowing about this I'm asking. I know about the feeling. That's why that request was made. <clears throat> All I want to know is in this special affair, because this is um, a big conversation. This ain't a small conversation. I'm, in, I'm hoping that we can reach a compromise on the use of hydro back. Plus, I'm also hoping we can get around the invoices and billing in this project, because you're doing a project of, I'm going to call it, Pilot magnitude. Flint is a incubator. It's a, you know, I don't like the gotcha type ways of working out stuff. I like the let's find out what's happening and see if we can openly reach a conclusion. Now I'm gonna be quiet, but this is a big conversation, and and it centers around can we hopefully get the administration, I'm hoping, to compromise on the use of this tool. As far as Goyette using it in a certain way, a variety of people can use it. I agree with Mr. Gilchrist that the hydro back contract with Ms. Brown is, is different from the use of hydro back in the traditional excavation. I think we agree on that. But I'm a be quiet for now, and then I see this word, and I see yeah. this field, and then I know this yeah. is your yeah. special yeah. order. No, this is your special order, but it's tough, and that's what I run into. When you put a special order and you know what you're going at, it can get kind of off track when people like me and others read it and jump into it. But this is on track. Everything you said is on track. Everything. Uh, Mr. Parks has said, Mr. Gilchrist, and it's this type of conversation. I supported it being on special order. You got the mayor here, you got Mr. Gilchrist here, and um, I think we got enough time to continue to talk. So I'll be quiet for now, but I don't think you can get around talking the use of that equipment if it relates to this Goyette contract. And what can happen as far as the building, the invoices, and then they call it the scope of the contract. Have the scope changed. The scope of the contract and the use of equipment have changed. And we got to try to figure out a compromise to how to fix that. I'll be quiet for now, but I know I'm going to be quiet the whole time. Thank you. I'd like a copy of that.
Or the document and update. And this takes how many thousand? In how many weeks? Uh, so on July, June on June sixth, we received uh, we we got our hydroback truck out for the first day of the project, and we were told to remove it immediately. So we got through about six hours of work utilizing that piece of equipment. We pulled it off the two, with the ecom and the city. And we that day we met with Mr. Gilcrest. When we met with them and uh, Mr. Gilcrest, he said we got to get rid of this thing. We got rid of it. And so we had it out for one day, for part of one day. And then we removed it in good faith because we wanted to continue working on the service line replacement. We figured at some point in the very near future, from June 6th, that this would get worked out. And when that didn't happen, we submitted a cost change, basically stating that, yes, while, while we, we will discontinue use of this piece of equipment, but it's costing us money, it's taking us longer to do the work, and, and all we want is, is we're, we're gonna work fairly and in good faith, but we just wanna get paid for, for the work that we're doing. If we would have been, if we would have been this project and there would have been a clause in that thing that said you can't use hy a hydroback truck for any of it, then our number would have been higher. That's that's what all there is to it. Determine our means and methods of construction. That's the con that's up to the contractor to do. So when we'll, we'll implement any piece of equipment that we need to within those RFP documents within our contract to get the work done <coughs> as efficiently as we can and as quickly as we can. Um, so that because we're working up against uh, a liquidated damages clause as well. So in, in in that contract, if we don't achieve so many sites by the end of this thing, then the city's going to be billing us. And so now, so now not only are we having to work against that clause, so now I've got to put more manpower on this job just to achieve that number of addresses before that substantial completion date, or else I'm gonna get charged for those liquidated damages, right? And so when we bid that contract, it, it was with the idea that we would heavily utilize hydroback equipment as a means and methods of our excavation. We didn't make this change. We didn't, we didn't want to get rid of this truck. That was put on us. And, and we're not gonna fight about getting rid of it or not. That's, that, that, that's a change that the city wants and the city's our customer. We're, ha we're happy to work within whatever constraints you want us to. We just expect our treatment return. So, well, so, so, so. I'm not so happy I know, with I know, that. I know, but let, let, me, just, let me just say, uh, uh, I think that I respect you, Joe. I think that you wanna ask you know, I met with him, and I explained to you earlier on, I met with him, and I said, he said to me, I did not know they were using the hydroplane. I did not know that. He told me that it was, I said, well, how are you doing that? And he said to me, here's how he was doing that, and why he was doing that. I said, why are you doing that? I said, when you have Miss Big in that order. That should not be the case. Then I, I in turn, I reached out to Acom and asked him about it. And then, and then, and then, and then, and, and then, and then, so, then I, a point of information. What's your point of information? Yeah. Well, they did, they did. That's a gas line. Whenever you get someone, yes. So they're picking up our first line stuff? No. No, I'm not. No, wait, wait, wait. No, please. Mr. Gilchrist, go ahead and finish it. No, it does. Anytime you dig for anything, the dig has to be involved. So that's what their relative is. But they don't see okay. it. No, but they know where they the gas is. Right. 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 Mr. Gilchrist, go ahead. And so, so I had asked him, I said, you can't do that. I said, one of the things that has taken place is that uh, they have been brought to the administration of the that there has been two lines that have been discovered using the hydrogen. Plus the fact you guys don't have a hydroplane contract. So you really can't be using a hydroplane contract. And Ms. 
Brown had come in also and said that they were in a being again hold. And so they had been told uh, uh, Council Lady Galloway that not to do that. And I won't ask you, you wouldn't mind to ask Mr. Dobby, who, who I had went to and, and, and said he's looking for this, told him to stop. And that's why I said then he went and did it anyway after he asked him to stop. Then they went anyway. Mr. Dobby, would you address that? That's correct, actually. Could you please stand up for the oh, record sorry. and announce who you are? Uh, Darby and I did with AECOM. Uh, it was on the Friday before Joe had, I believe it was June 4th, you had mentioned Joe. Um, we, we had actually gave them an authorization to go ahead and use it. After there was a discussion regarding the splices, we returned a phone call on a Friday late afternoon, said you guys can't have the hydrovac machine out there. There's concerns with what we've discovered as far as these splices. You have to, you can't use it. Okay. Um, I followed that up with an email late that Friday evening. On Monday, the work was conducted, um, and then we subsequently went out and said, look, we told you not to use this machine. They then, in, in fairness, had pulled the machine off. These are those 15 properties in question. So we had told them not to, to go out and use the hydrovac machine for that specific day. Um, they went ahead and did it anyway. So the 15 properties were done after we had specifically told them not to do that work. Can I still Yeah. So you sent them an email when on Friday? Uh, it was late in the evening. I was driving home back to Pittsburgh. It was probably June 3rd. Okay. And they did their job on Monday. So it was just, what, three days later? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't understand the discrepancy there because you sent an email Friday evening. I mean, it takes time to... You're, you're saying that they did 15 homes in one day? Okay. That to me doesn't seem like a fraudulent thing. Or I didn't say it was fraudulent. Okay. I did not say it was fraudulent. Okay. So you're not paying them for the 15 homes because you sent an email on Friday evening and they continue to use it? I don't think it's time to send any matter. I do. I Joe, do. did you receive the email? I think it I did. And, okay. and, and let me jump in. The, the timing on that would have given us plenty of time to pull that off. So this is the miscommunication that I spoke about. I want to rewind the clock to Thursday when we had our meeting with AE Town. So at the beginning of the project, we were just getting started. We couldn't get started digging yet because we couldn't dig anywhere until Martha Brown had finished her work. And they had a, they had a problem with capacity at the time. They couldn't get enough trucks on the project. So what we said is we're willing to bring our trucks to the project and we'll, and we'll build the city exactly what Martha Brown Billing, just so you can have more trucks because we have them. Martha Brown doesn't have enough. We're offering to do it under the Hydrovac investigation contract. And so they took that back, and I think Mr. Gilchrist on that. Friday, and at the time it was a tentative yes, um, as of Thursday. Friday they got back with us and said, Joe, no, you can't do that. We don't have the bid, bid line items for that, for you to do that work, because Martha Brown has that contract do the hydrovac exploratory contract. That means all we'd be doing is going out and punching two holes with the hydrovac truck. So we told us don't do that work. That was the message that I received, even though that's not what he was trying to tell me. What I think what he was trying to tell me is don't use the hydrovac truck at all. What I interpreted from that was that don't you, you can't do Mark Brown's job. Okay, so what we said is okay. He said, but you can proceed with digging without Martha Brown being in front of you. So you don't need Martha Brown's results to do that work. We don't need to know if there's copper or galvanized or whatever at those houses. You guys can go to work. So what we did is we figured we could just go out and do our job the way we did it. So when we showed up, part of that part of our job, the way we did it, was to use a hydrovac truck. We weren't doing the work that Martha Brown would do. Martha Brown would zap two holes in on either side of the curb box, identify those that pipe material on both sides, the, the line to the public and the private side, they would report that to AD Town and to the city, and then a, hydro, uh, then a uh, service line replacement contractor would come in behind us. So that, that was done away with. We could not do that. What we did is we brought our hydrovac truck in, and a backhoe, other equipment, but we used that hydrovac truck, and we made substantially larger holes around that curb box to the extent that we had to replace every curb box. Martha Brown wouldn't have to do that because they're making two holes two feet away. And I think it's what that, I, I didn't. 
read that entire RFP. I wasn't involved in that kind of thing. So, so. How large is, what, how, how much more substantial? You just said you're doing substantially larger. Sure. How much larger? At the time, I think we were, we were digging between the, uh, the sidewalk and the curb, wherever that was at. And then when, and then when uh, there was another order given that we had to expose four to five feet on either side, and so now we're, we're, we're going larger now. But at that time in the contract, June 22nd, that order was given. But at that time in the contract, we were exposing more, three, about three feet on either side, so six foot of line. And that was, we were using a hydrobike truck, we were using any piece of equipment that we thought was appropriate for each individual address, based on how we did the job. So that's why we had the hydrobike truck there that day, because we just went to work on the service line replacement contract. And the way we did the service line replacement contract was by utilizing the hydrobike truck as well. So then that day, that day, Mr. Gilchrist, hang on, just let me finish my point. That, that day, when they told us, no, this is not what we intended, we didn't want you to have this in here at all, we removed it. That day, we got rid of it. As soon as, as, soon as they told us that day, we got rid of it. I went and drove to Mr. Gilchrist's office, had a conversation with him, and he said, for the time being, you need to have this thing gone. And that's what we've done, and we haven't had it back since. So, 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 so. yeah, so, um, could you just, I want to make sure that I'm, well, before, never mind. Miss, are you done? I just have one more question. Okay. So, given that there was a misunderstanding, and it seems pretty clear to me, I get the misunderstanding, uh, so why haven't we paid them yet? I, well, the recommendation of the city was initially this work was pulled an awful occur, they went ahead and did it, okay? So that's where we said, just at least strike this off of the invoice, and then we'll discuss it. I subsequently provided a recommendation to give them a partial payment on that, which went to the city, so that's in effectively the city's court as to whether they want to pay for that partial. The work was, we told them not to do the work. So they went ahead and did it anyways, in an effort to try and be somewhat fair about it, to say, we found the material that we needed to find, plus they replaced some curb boxes, to be fair and give them a little bit of compensation for their effort, certainly. Fully recognizing, again, that they were told not to do it. I, I need to see all the emails, all the communication on this. Uh, that adds up. That's not the uh, Can we make the, I just want to make that official referral to administration. I need to see the email that said stop the work. Lawsuit 
provided for the city had to pay or the state had to pay for excavating, but they didn't specify what kind of excavating. So we're assuming they have to do whatever kind of excavating we're telling them to do. Well, this is a gamble. This is a crap sheet. They're saying, oh, well, we'll take this back to court to enforce this. We cannot, as a city council, with the fiscal responsibility, okay, of making sure that we're handling these finances correctly, we cannot incur debt that we don't have a guaranteed way to pay for that debt. So this is just the first of many that are going to come up, this first 90000 And then we're going to have more. And how are we going to pay for it? If the state does not allow state funds or wind funds to be used, you know, we're going to have to take out a general fund or the water fund or something. And I can't believe council isn't really on top of this in understanding this because, you know, that, you know, forget your history, doomed to repeat it. This has gone on in the past in many different scenarios. And we have related scenarios. In my ward, okay, we had whole blocks, especially one block on Craig Drive, that was excavated manually, made a god-awful mess. And not only was the whole parkway and driveways and everything, now the sidewalks have fallen in, so we're gonna have to pay to restore those sidewalks. But the homeowner certified, Ms. Bendix, Ms. Bendix, did I ask you a question? Me, Larry Birmingham, where you go? Okay, 3713 Craig Drive. W.T. Stevens was supervising one of their subcontractors, HDD, to come out and do the excavation. Larry didn't want them to do it. There was an altercation with Big Mike from uh, W.T. Stevens, who then threatened the homeowner. He was going to whoop his ass in the street, which is not very appropriate for a contractor. These are allegations. I'm hearing a council person. My point of information is do you know for a fact what you're saying is true as it relates to manual? They probably use backhoes. And do you know people saying they're whooping people's ass to sell? Well, there Be are careful eight, what we say eight in this neighborhoods who have signed okay, witness well, statements. Well, but Mr. Benzik, a lot of different points that I wanted to bring out is Mr. Yeah, Birmingham said yeah, he yeah. called you because he had worked in DPW for, I think, two decades. And he said he knew for a fact that there were cars on file of the city that not only his property, but the entire block, block had certifications they were copper to copper lines. So the bigger question there is, why are we wasting money doing any type of excavation when we have a certification that they're copper lines, when we could take that money and ask the legislators to redesignate use and use that money for more infrastructure. So we have many issues going on here about this hydrovacuum versus traditional or manual excavation. And I just want to make sure of two things, and I will get you to see. I want to make sure that we're not incurring debt, that we don't have a guaranteed, and I mean today, not a crap shoe, Ms. 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 Okay. Ms. Ms. you go any further, it sounds like what you're talking about is one of the other orders, but I'm going to let you go ahead and wrap up. Point of information. What's your point of information? Ms. Seals, do you know what you're saying when you describe it traditional excavation? I do, Mr. Mays. Let me finish my point of information. Well, you can. You want to play games? You want to talk stuff and you want to share when I'm doing a point of information? It can get real funky up in here, Miss Field. Ain't nobody out there doing manual. That means shovel, hand. They using trucks. So when you talk about this, I'm saying my point of information is make sure you talking right. I know yes, what you mean. I would just like to point out that even Mr. Boyette just said sometimes we're using shovels, That's sometimes correct. with backhoes, and I know different people like different terminology, traditional meaning shovel. backhoe, it manual means meaning shovel. shovel, but I'm well aware of the difference, and both have been used, but I don't think it was important enough to interrupt. I do. So of the two points, I'm going to repeat. The first point, point is order. that we are... This is my point of order. 
if Miss Fields continues to try to tear this, it's going to get way out of order. Just be quiet, do the point of information, and when you get told something, point of it's going to get Mr. real ordered by order. this orderly by me if you can't keep it in order. Point of order, Mr. Order. 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 order is a breach of rules. What rule has been Moving dirt from from the hole to another location. 
okay, and we use them all for different purposes. And uh, when we lose one of those pieces of equipment, it kind of takes it takes out a part of the equation that we use for the job. But we we get to these numbers a certain way, right? It, we we don't just throw them out there. So that using that as part of the equation on getting to that number that we did to this this is this. My my question to the administration is anybody ever have an answer? If it's not costing the city anymore and they're still doing traditional um traditional segregation estuating, um why specifically are we making a stop if they're still gonna be doing the digging? Is it just using that they're, they're, they're making us they're making us stop use using the hydro excavator for any purpose. See yeah, that's my question. Right. That's not my question to Rob or he he um, I get why we're making the stop for the simple hydro banks and just using that and then going on to the next house because that could be potentially six lines or there could be places. I get that. My question is why are we making them stop for using it? I just want to know why. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't want to Well, just my opinion on this, that's the directive that we've received, so... Um, okay. If you don't mind me, Rob, when I hear that from the management, that means somebody above me gave a directive. Everybody has is that gone. correct? Everybody I, has I, I'm not being facetious, but what I'm saying right. is anything that might proceed after this is hearsay. And so who did you receive the directive from? The, the order was handed down in a letter from the mayor. Okay. Thank you so much. And so now I guess we need to go to the mayor to answer Mr. Garrett's question. Does anybody want to? So, 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 so let me just say, Madam Chair, that I think that if, if, if you, if you uh, listen to what's being said, said should the mayor uh, stop hydro back. I, 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 I get all what he's saying, but it's also what he's saying to uh, Mr. Guerrero. He's saying that I'm using my truck for more than hydro back. I'm using it for uh, uh, multiple things that's going on. But 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 the main thing he's using it for is hydro back. And we are saying, uh, Madam Chair, at this particular time. Point, point of information. What's the point of information? Hydro back and truck to use the hydro back. Are you saying that he's using it for more than exploratory excavation? See, Say that you're using for multiple things. I'm saying that they are using for hydro vacuum. That's what they're using for. That's what they're using for. That's my point right there. And so I'm saying is that because, Madam Chair, that the mayor was brought to the mayor's attention from the excavator that we were missing line hydro vacuum. We're missing line. Question then was asked, how many are we missing? So we, we know we're missing more than zero. And so if we're missing one, that should be a concern for all of us. Right. Right. Uh, my, my question yeah, is, I, I think that, so uh, I get what you're saying. Okay. I, I think that we have a traditional, personally, I, I would not want to miss any lives in the city of Portland. Right. 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 Traditional hydro, traditional excavating is the best route to go to actually get all the money. Right. And I believe that Boyette said that they're still doing the traditional. They're just using the hydro back to go around. I'm mean, hearing two different things. So, and then you say you're just using it to go around the wires and or other pipes and still digging up the, so many feet. So we put the information from the chair because we can go around this. But my point of information is why are we eliminating a tool that they use that helps them efficiently do what they're doing? That's my concern. That's the question that I have. Because we are because we are using hydro vacuum. That's why. We are using we are using hydro vacuum. It's just that simple. We are using hydro vacuum. That's that's put on hold. 
We don't use an hydro bag. I'm trying to bring it out. Well, Mr. Garrett, only if you want to. I don't know if your answer, if your question got answered. Wait a minute, ladies. No, I was also curious okay. if, if any other of the contractors were using hydro bank trucks to, to look and see if there's anything that they were going to miss before they did the traditional exit. Uh, I can't ask you very good. Well, I'm not sure i can't recall if they were or not but i seem to think that some of them had trucked out there and then when we again gave the whole you know, use of the truck everybody pulled out. So, so basically what well, is doing more work than what we assumed they were to be doing with the original contract but it's not against their contract it is doing like an extra check just to make sure but they're still doing the traditional you guys i haven't seen the site i haven't seen go yet but are they still when they're using their hydro and trucks are they still doing the traditional style? Are they still digging up the bike? I would say they are, yeah. So that, that's where not, they don't have a hydro bike truck on the bike. So that's where, that's where I'm confused. If they're still doing their job and it makes them do it more efficiently, um, I, I get the point of teaching it for the, the other service. But I ask where I don't get why we're making them spend more money if it just helps, helps them. Do you, you understand where I'm coming from? Do you, do you, uh, is that concerning at all for? You kind of see that done that way, or is it something that we all may be missing? Could you adjust your, um, say your name for the yes. record? My name is Alan Wong. I'm an AD Alan Wong, you guys, please. Can you say it one more time? You can't say it on the top. Alan Wong. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So, the. Uh, they're using the hydro backing just as an extra tool just to make sure they're digging in the right area. They're still digging regardless of doing the traditional, let's skip the word, doing it traditionally. Uh, so, but they're still using, they're just using the hydro back to kind of see where they're going to go. So it doesn't prevent them from digging. So I'm just confused on why we're not letting them use it if they're still going to dig it. I get why if they're just going to hydro back it, then they don't dig it. That's a, that's a concern. That's the, concern. the real concern is how much not what tool you use. Do you go two feet, four feet, ten feet, or the whole yard? That's really yeah, what they they're said. They're still digging the hole. They're digging. They're digging up to what they were told to dig, which was a uh, oh, the question is, do you they're, realize? They're, doing, they're still digging that, even though they use the hydro. So I would just yeah. That's all I want. They only they only utilize the hydro back as uh, Mr. Parks mentioned in the very beginning. Since they stopped using the hydro back. They have completed the excavation using traditional excavation, as the other contractors have, as the other contractors have. And I know one of uh, Mr. Park's concern is is is, is uh, suggesting additional costs for using hydrogen, but for not using hydrogen. But we've discussed, and Mr. Benson has been meeting with me also, when we discussed with each contractor the current methodology of using traditional excavation four feet on each side of the curb stop. And all the contractors, all the other contractors have not raised a concern or lodged a concern about the extra charge. They, they have, in fact, said the methodology they're using now is very efficient and they're very, they're very, they're, they're very happy to use it. So I think that's one piece of information that I think council needs to understand, or the committee needs to understand. The current methodology is working. And progress is being made, and the other contractors have not raised an issue about not using hydrogen. That, that's point number one. Point number two is when you have four or five tools in your tool bag, you don't necessarily use all five tools in each project. Each project is a unique situation. And Mr. Parks is correct. He uses his their experience in terms of which tools to use. All the city has done is said, we don't feel comfortable. We don't feel comfortable having hydrovac equipment on site. And Mr. Wow. Excuse me. And, and my third point is that in the area that uh, Councilwoman uh, Fields mentioned about where copper and co copper to copper was certified, I think Mr. Uh, Darby, sorry Darby, uh, Mr. Knighty has a note that you showed me that one block away there was a splice found. So 
I do want to clarify that because it was on the it was on the end of a cul-de-sac, so it followed the street before it crossed. So that's why we continue to follow. Oh, so when did you mail? Well, that we can't well. Did you get your know, question uh, answered? No, we can go I did back. not. Get Mr. Mayor's got another time. I, that's coming that's in a good here. question. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, um, um, yeah, but but just so because I keep hearing two different answers, I, I get yeah, you're right. So when you do the hydro vacuum. You don't use that to look at the pipe at all. You just use that to dodge other things. Well, sometimes we'll use it around the pipe. Uh, like I said, it's just another. I mean, you spoke to the current methodology. But right? you dig. Do you dig no matter what? We're all we're all digging. So traditionally, sure. you, you, regardless of what you use the hydro vacuum for, you just use that to kind of get to the pipe and then dig it. Sure. Up. We're, we're always we're thing. always digging. We're removing earth from the ground no matter what tool we're using. Uh, primarily heavy equipment, but we're going to use that hydrovac equipment often. So if we can dig, if we can dig down around that pipe, and then we can use the hydrovac equipment to remove all the dirt and slurry down that down in the hole, to expose, we can get a really good, clean look at that line. That's the best piece of equipment for that. And so I can guarantee one thing is that we would have missed zero lines, uh, slices if we had the if we had the hydrovac equipment out there because that we've found so far because we would not have been exposing any less of that pipe just because that hydrogen equipment was out there. You would have the same, you would receive the same product from us. We'd be exposing just as much line, you'd be receiving the same data, you'd be building all of your all your databases in the same manner because we'd be telling you it's copper here and it's galvanized here or it's lead here and whatever other material over here because we'd be finding that. We're giving you the same information now that we would be giving you if we had the hydrovac truck out there, the only problem is, is we're doing it with a lot more manpower on the job site because we don't have that truck there. And we're also compromising the safety of every day because we could hit, if we hit a gas line with our uh, back, backhoe, I can guarantee you that I'm going to break it. If, or a sewer line, I can guarantee you that I'm going to break that sewer line if I've got a backhoe out there. If I have the, the hydrovac truck, I can tell you nine times out of ten I'm not going to break that line. And the end result is going to be the same because I'm going to expose just as much of that pipe with the way we use the way, the way we use the hydrovac truck. Martha Brown, Martha Brown is different because their their spec was to only expose anything at all on either side of that turbine. You're using a different way. I think that's important. You know, you're not getting it the same way that they right. They may be using. That's where I, I kind of I get what you're doing because you're covering the same amount of ground and it's a little bit safer. But I also I understand the point of keeping doing it through the traditional way so we don't miss anything. And so, and I, my, my thing is, I, I, you're using it in a different way that they maybe any time may not have known you were using it. And that effort, I, I don't know, I don't know what happened there. I don't sure. know. I haven't been in the hole, so I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I, I do want to. Also, I think that that doesn't sound like it's a, a huge right. deal breaker. It doesn't sound like you guys are doing anything wrong. That's not, it's not, so that's where I'm confused. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe could, could I have to the point where you should make it? Could the plumber was there? Just the plumber, 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 the
Somebody came to the Friday meeting and laid oh, yeah. out some pipes, and I heard what that was oh. saying. That ain't the same yeah, no, it's just, yeah, it's the same problem. Yeah, it's the same problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But before you, if you may ask the question, because I think you, you've seen the pipes that, uh, that were spliced and you brought them in. Which, um, but I think what, what he's saying is that, does that not see those pipes? Because he's hydrolyzing in a different way. And he's, he's a duty of school to get down there, but he's still doing the traditional uh, estimating. That's what I'm confused. It's not like he's hydrolyzing. But you're asking me if you can see a pipe with a bunch of earth out of there, you can see a pipe. You don't have to be a pipe. What you need to see, I guess, you know, I understand that. You know, as long as someone's getting that far, so eventually you'd like to be You have a dog in it. I don't care. Would you say the way you're doing it is effective then? Mm -hmm. It's not any more effective than I am. Mm -hmm. I don't know as far as. The thing that I don't want to get into is the fact of what they do with that. How do they get more dirt back? There's a whole other issue that you guys have to deal with. And what bothers me is the fact that... Uh, and who wears the person's back? Yeah, my name's Max Olsen. There's a whole lot of issues. Are you the city? No, I'm not. Oh. No. I'm a plumber that was in the field. Who are you? Who are you? Are, are you a subcontractor plumber for who? I'm not bad. Yeah, yeah. So do you have your own contract, or are you subcontracting no. over one of the other contracts? No, I'm the, I'm a master plumber. And you're working on the project? Okay. Go ahead. You said you were WTC? I've worked for them, too, yeah. Okay. So what it boils down to is there's a, there's a whole lot of issues that you guys got to deal with. Sometimes I think that uh, you need somebody, I don't want it. Sometimes you need someone in the dirt, in there, to discuss a lot of a lot of the problems. I'm seeing miscommunication back and forth. I'm seeing so I don't want to get into the politics. Yeah, the earth is moving by foot. You can see it as well as I can. Because I'm a plumber doesn't mean I can't see any better. Now, what happens before that? What happens after that? I have seen the hyperback. Right line, but you'd have to replace them. So that would be on them. I've seen the backhoe break them. You'd have to replace them. So, right. so, you, so okay, so Mr. Dara, let me just, I want to make sure that you have the, that your question, because I think it sounds like my question. Point of information. Is your question, it, what is your point of information? I'm sorry. We have been told four or five times so far the difference between either We're not asking. Well, I know, but, but we keep questioning it. The point of information time. is a question. What is your point of information? We're wasting time by keep asking the same question. That's not a point of information, but thank you. It should be a point of order. It seems like your question that has not been answered is, why should we be allowed to take something out of somebody else's toolbox if it's causing them to be effective and it's not costing the city any more? And so, is that what you were saying? I mean, why and, should they? Thank you. They're also still doing the traditional. They're still doing that everything that's the culture, right? Okay. The so that's the question. That's the question. When I was saying, but they, but they, 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 they are doing traditional excavation. You're saying that, but they are doing traditional excavation. You can't do both things. They're doing traditional excavation. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Okay, because um. I thought you mean he's nobody. Okay, ladies. Everyone is somebody. Okay. I'm going to read you ladies. I'm giving you ladies a warning. I'm giving you ladies a warning. So, we're going to get that. What is your point of order? Madam Chair, we got to stop this. Thank She's sitting here saying he's a nobody. That's not what I said. Yes, you did. I heard you. Okay, but ladies, okay. We're going to stop that. We're not going to even deal with that on this council. Okay. What do you mean he's a nobody? And she's not okay. about time she can No, you mean to me the same thing. Okay. Are we going to sit right here? Because I'm going to shut this up. Oh, okay. Right. Miss Winfrey Carter. I'm tired of it. I'm going to rule you. I, you have gotten one warning. If it goes any further, Miss Winfrey Carter and Miss Worthy, that is your last warning. After this, I am going to ask Officer Metcalf to remove you from this meeting. We are not going to mock each other. We can be civil and get our work done. Mr. Guerra, do you have any more questions? Yeah. 
that she didn't have enough trucks out there because she had enough trucks to fulfill her contract in a timely manner. The problem was she wasn't finding enough lead in a timely manner for Goya, Stephen, and the other three contractors. So effectively, we had given a contract to Goya and the other contractors to start work. And we didn't have any work for them. Um, one, the one contract that was Waldorf had a large area with a higher density because it was close to the center of the city. Everywhere else around the perimeter of the city is largely copper. So the capacity issue we ran into was not necessarily that she didn't have enough trucks out there. It was that there wasn't enough lead out there. She could have had 10,000 trucks out there, but we wouldn't have found enough lead to, to keep these guys busy. Was, was what happened. So how... Can you give me some insight into the original dialogue between the two of you? that gave you the confidence to say, tentatively, keep doing what you're doing. The dialogue, How you're doing the dialogue we had, and obviously, the, their concern was we're under contract, and we don't have enough information. What, what ended up happening is we would find intermittent lead pieces here and there. So we would effectively say, here's 10 addresses. They can knock that out in a day to two days. So we ultimately said, go forward with hydro backing. After discussion with the city, that was rescinded, and we said, stop, no hydro backing. So oh, that's not stopped. We haven't even started yet at that point. Well, correct. don't use it. That's, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Don't use it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's effectively where it came to. Mm -hmm. And then we moved forward with doing exploratory with the, with the traditional excavation to where we said, we can't wait because we are not going to find enough lead to keep you guys busy. So then we moved forward with the exploratory, which is digging, which 
traditional excavation for all the contractors. We started giving them work in, in blocks, um, multiple blocks at a time, and to start at one end. Well, I, I, um, can you, I, I want to just kind of, you, you said we weren't finding enough lead, which is why we gave them. We, we weren't finding enough lead to, to have them do lead replacement. Right, and so you said, which is why we went with traditional. We told them to move forward and start doing exploratory excavations themselves so that we could hopefully have them find lead and replace it. And so it. what, explain to me how, what that means. And I'm going to tell you why, because I don't know what you guys do. Sure. But when I hear we don't have enough work for you, and I want you guys to begin to do, what is the term, the exploratory, exploratory, and that means with the shovel? Effectively what that means is we ask them to dig on each side of the curb mm -hmm. box to try and identify where, where. Without the exploratory. Ex Without yeah. hydro vacuum. Is that right? Yeah, the idea was to, to excavate on either side of the curb box so that if they found lead, they could replace the lead. So why why did why can they do that but they can't use the hydro vacuum? I'm just have to have you else. Yeah, I know, but the, the, it just seems like the difference is possibly speed. Yeah. And 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 um I'm sorry, in my mind when I hear, you know, use mm -hmm. the shovel, it seems like in the meantime, yeah. we'll keep you guys busy because you got a contract. I'm not saying oh, I'm not saying that's what it is, yeah, but I'm yeah. telling you mindset. Sure, I understand. The way that I look at it. We can't give you we can't keep you busy because we don't have a lot of lead lines, but we want to make sure you're doing something. Well until we can possibly in, in fairness. Okay. The idea was that as Martha Brown proceeded with her work, that these guys were effectively doing the same thing and trying to identify as much copper or lead as possible. That was that was the So line. so would it be safe to say that they were in essence doing something that Martha Brown was contracted to do? Not in the same capacity because they were digging a much larger hole. Martha but it's Brown the same goal. goal. Would it be safe to say that the goal is the same? Methodology? Is not the same, but the goal, which means that they were checking, technically doing what Martha Brown would have been doing, but while she was taking care of something over there, they were taking care of things over here to keep everybody kind to of a much home. larger capacity. Okay. Yes. okay. At the end of the day, yeah. Okay. And if, if and we would have found that what's there was something other than Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. What's your point of information? Um, if I remember correctly... Hey, hey, you don't get to take the floor. What is your point of information? Okay. That's a question. Okay, if I remember correctly, homes built from 1955 and up, because the, okay. the law said use copper. Is it true that homes built... The law said use copper from 1955 and up. Okay, so that's And if question. we're not checking the age of these houses or checking the inside that's to see if it's copper, uh -huh. we're it. messing up. Okay. okay. I would not say that that's completely accurate. You um, yes. okay. I, I don't disagree with no, that was the, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I believe it was into the 60s actually, okay. but okay. Um, either way, we have found numerous examples, um, as Mr. Wong has pointed out, of where people said they knew they had a copper to copper connection, and it was not true. Okay. So, and so, but I don't want to lose, I appreciate this no, point of information, right. but I don't want to lose where I was going. No, go ahead. Because I'm concerned with the, the, the I'm not saying that, that and I, I like in the letter where it says when we get past the political issues, right? We know the state is doing whatever they want to do, right? But, but the concern that I have is, and I'm really saddened that we don't have Derek Jones here anymore because everybody that I'm hearing are not, they haven't been doing um, the, Bidding, time. you guys, I'm sure you guys do it, but I'm hearing things about the bids that normally Derek Jones would be here to say, right? Because when I hear Mr. Gilchrist, in all, fair, in, in all fairness, Mr. Gilchrist said um, when the bid was done, it didn't say that this was the way that they had to do it in order to get the bid. Now, because I don't know how bids work, I don't know that you necessarily have to say, I'm going to do A, I'm going to do B, I'm going to do C. 
usually it's how many you can handle, what is the cost that it's going to be for you to handle what you're saying you're going to be handling, and is that most cost efficient for the city, and does it get the objective for the city done? And so I know that there are some things that have scopes, and so now my question becomes, based on what Mr. Gilchrist says, is there a scope that said that? That they had to identify what they were going to be doing, and that we had the ability to come in and say, I know that you said that you were going to use this in your bid, but, and, and, and maybe I should ask this question, is all of this happening because of the Martha Brown contract? Because a lot, I'm just saying, based on what has been said here, it sounds like a lot of stepping on Martha Brown stuff, stuff that she would have been doing. And I don't know if that's true or not, but we've never answered the question as to if it's not costing any more, why are we stopping them? Because we do know that capacity and manpower is different based on these two methods of doing work. And so a, city, a, a company that bids out a certain amount of dollars amount to the city only to find out that uh, a very efficient piece of what they were going to do has now cost them more and so i think that's a lot that cannot be answered i am so sorry because i never thought in my wildest dreams that <laughs> this would turn into this and i don't want anybody to be stepping on anybody's toes but this doesn't seem fair i don't care if it was wt stevens i don't care if it was whoever the contractors are, right? And, and and I heard you, Mr. Wong, say none of the contractors are complaining. Well, if the other contractors aren't used to using this in their toolbox, they're not going to complain. It's just the normal way that they do business. Some companies, and I'm in a microeconomic class, and it was saying technology and the ability to use certain machinery allows you to have an edge on your competitors because you found a more efficient way to do something. And so it sounds like to me, this company may have had that, whereas the other companies may not have had a big deal with it. And so to say that none of the other contractors have had a problem with this, in my opinion, is not a fair assessment, because they haven't had something taken from them that they would normally use to be efficient. And I hope that makes sense. And so, yeah, you can say something if you want. Sure. Thank you. There's two points I'd like to make. The other contractors have used Hydrovac before. They used it in phase four. And they were familiar with the technology. There were several, there were two Hydrovac firms in phase four, and they worked with, with, with all the contractors. The other um, suggestion I have is Mr. Parks is suggesting that it's more efficient for him to incorporate Hydrovac into his technology, into his approach. We don't have that comparison. I'm not saying that it's not true. Sure. We don't have that comparison. Did you get that letter? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Because this is going way over. Yeah, we tell you. We got people that are coming for a special order. Mr. Smith, I got you guys all on the same. And, and so the other thing I'd like to say is I think we may be forgetting the, the context um, because shortly after Mr. Darby spoke to Mr. Parks, the day after, there was there was a, a, quick, a quick meeting where the mayor announced her concern about the spices. So at the time, Mr. Knighty spoke with Mr. Parks about the possibility of using hydrovac. He had no knowledge that this issue would would have been uh, raised to the, to, the, to the elevation of the administration, the senior officer of the city. And so when the mayor said to me at the quick meeting, we need to stand on a high backing. Please let your people know and please let all the contractors know. That's what we did on Friday. And that's why Friday evening, Mr. Knighty had a conversation with, with Mr. Parks and all the contractors. So the context here is the direction was given for a specific reason, concern about the safety of the, of, of the citizens. And I get that. I right. think the thing that I'm, I'm having a hard time grasping, Mr. Long, is it seems like capacity reasoning is different. Now, maybe it's not, but what Martha Brown does and what these contractors are doing, it seems like their scope of work is different, and that's why I'm confused. I can't speak for any of my colleagues. Yeah, right, but it, 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 it's not being treated different. 
what we're doing is, even though the scope is different, we're saying the machine just needs to be taken. It doesn't matter what you're using it for. Whereas the original intent of the the scope, the hydrobathing being taken, was specific in the Martha Brown type of contract per se, and this one. And so that's where I'm confused. I can't speak for my colleagues. But this is getting long. I have a couple of other colleagues that would like to do something. But I would like to make a referral because one of the other things that was spoken of was liquid liquidation damages. Because in the before General McDaniel left, and so I want to be specific in my referral. Before General McDaniel left, it was clear that two of the contractors were not on task to finish the contract that they had been given. Part of that was a verbal extension was given to them. And I'm not speaking for any of my colleagues, but in Councilwoman Galloway's recollection, I never, ever, ever received a definitive date of what date was verbally given. And because verbal contracts are not legal in the court system, the in the court system, it's like a he say, she say thing. I don't know how um, we even are able to do that. So the question is, one, what was the verbal date that was given to those contractors? And the reason why I have a concern with that is because if, if I'm not mistaken, and Mr. Newsom, you're going to be part of this referral, it, 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 it might be my understanding that some of that work might just now be not been completed that long ago. Some of it being completed in 2018. And if I'm not mistaken, General McDaniels hasn't been here since maybe February 3rd of 2017. Is, it, is that about the date? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, he was here? He, end of 2017. Well, when he came before council to say that we were going to find out exactly how far those contractors were was in January or February of 17. And so I want to know how far those contractors were behind. When is the last date that they, com they completed that work? that was under um, being o oversaw to, to possibly run into those liquidated damages. I hope that's an a, a understandable referral. And so based on that, Mr. May, thank you for allowing me to squeeze in there to my colleagues. Um, oh, wait one second. Ms. Um, Attorney Willie, you want to say something? Yeah, we, we actually did come here and talk about this very thing in detail. We did. We did, but it, it was never answered. There was it never was a day answer. I could go, okay. It was answered. Okay. Well, then you should be able to give it as a yeah, referral. Yeah, I know. Okay. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. So, so you would know that there there was an answer to all of okay. this. And, and that the contractors were on time. So that was one of the things that we worked with Derek Jones before he left to make sure we were clear on because we had to evaluate whether or not we would seek liquidated damages. The determination was made that they had complied um, during December, and then there were still additional added December of 18? No, December okay. of 17. Oh, but, December, but we talked about it. Mr. General McDaniel came before us in February of 17. It was part of the time. Okay. No. Well, if you could get the referral answered, that would yeah, be great. Yeah, I'm just telling okay. you now, just so you know, they okay. were on time for the record. Okay, thank you. We'll pull those records to you as well. Councilman May. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'm going to move. While I got the floor, I'm going to move these resolutions and that type of thing, even though we don't possess the order. Motion is in order at this time, and I'm going to move them. But before I move them, I think the council has to educate itself on what's happening. I supported this special order reluctantly, but I wanted to see how it was going to go. I've seen how it went. I would say through you, Madam Chair, to Ms. Worthing, when I listen to what you and Ms. Winfrey Carter was talking about, regardless of whether the mayor is Williamson, Walling, Weaver, when you see the mayor and her chief advisors, no matter how they funded this bill, come up here, we've got a duty and a responsibility, in my opinion, to be respectful, he got something to give. He's speaking. Be respectful. Just as you are respectful to Miss Fields and others. Be respectful. That's where that little circle war came in. But it's a learning experience. 
can you really do this in a special affairs, Miss Brown? Not really. So that's another learning experience. This is committee work, it's serious work. Hydro backing, and it's the type work when the administration come up in full force with the mayor and Mr. Gilchrist or whoever the other folks think they don't like or don't want to hear from, hear from them. Mm -hmm. Because you had everybody at the table who might could have cut a deal. And the deal was being able to use hydro back. Mr. Branch ain't going to cut that deal. Mr. Wong and Mr. Darby ain't going to cut that deal. Um, Mr. Benzik ain't going to cut that deal. It didn't take a rocket scientist to know that folks had showed up who was the decision maker. And we blew it. We didn't even get into real negotiations. I peeked my head in there at the beginning and peeked my head out on purpose. You know why I did it on purpose? Because we had some discussion in the last week through Miss Field as who and how stuff should check. You better be really smart if you want to be a good looking counsel as to how you take care of business when big shots show up. I have questions on this topic. It's not relevant. You know, he has the full. And so, and I'm asking if you deny that it is relevant, that it is relevant, it, is relevant. Mean, it, it is. should it take is. a rocket scientist to figure that out. I'm going to say this. It, it, it's, it's when you respond to her, um, I'm going to rule that it is an order in that he has the floor. He says that he was moving on. And his, his, what he's saying was relevant to what has happened during the discussion on this special order. So you asked me to rule. Please love me. And I see you. You can appeal. And uh, so you can appeal if you don't agree, and I will with, and I'll understand it. But I wanted to share how it tied in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a problem. We got a problem knowing who's relevant, whether it's Mr. Gilchrist, whether my words is relevant, and that's a problem. And it comes from the same faction. And, it, and, and it's getting ridiculous. We ain't going to be able to function properly. When I chair a meeting and I let everybody talk, and then Mr. Griggs says, Mr. May, the only one violating the five minute group. It's relevant on who keeps dipping in here Ms. Field, Ms. Worthy, Mr. It's relevant. And so we got to be fair and let everybody be heard from, but if these same folks keep offending the people who we invite up here, we ain't going to get to negotiations. Because I've seen the mayor give them get up and leave because of what was being said. So it's relevant if you're going to be a body of nine. Do you know how many times I hold my tongue? Do you know how many? I'm holding it now, damn it. You got a lot to say, don't you? You got a lot to say. No, I can handle Miss Worthy. Miss Worthy, this ain't a clown show. This is a serious business show. Mr. Gilchrist, Mr. Darby, Mr. Wong, Mr. Benzik, 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 Mr.
is the chair aware that calling a point of order is not a mocking? When there is a rule being broken, that's what a point of order is. Ms. Worthing called a point of order. I called a point of order. Mr. Greer called a point of order because Mr. Mays was violating all of our rules about disorderly conduct, about, um, you know, just because he has a floor doesn't give him the right to break those rules. Ms. Fields, what you weren't aware of, and I hope that you review the tape, is Ms. Worthing mm -hmm. began to mock, and it had nothing to do with her point of order. I ruled on her point of order. Anyone. You should I review the tape. Did we have a appeal on the chair and it's right. out of order? And so Can all you I'm shut saying her up? is, all I'm saying is, Mr. Mays has the floor. What is your point of order, Mr. Guerra? It was that he was yelling, but I did hear what she said before. And so thank I see you. Why you were upset, and so but I don't think thank you. Like exactly. And so I'm asking Mr. Yeah. Mays to that calm down. There I is know. some people that saw what happened, but now I'm asking you to make your statement and let's I'm move on. I'm going to make my statement and do what I said. I'm going to do move these resolutions. Mr. Guerra, I ain't no punk politics. My voice gonna get loud, just like a Baptist preacher. It's gonna rise and it's gonna lower. And it ain't no, it's gonna be that. It's done been that for four years, it's gonna be it for four more. White folks can say they scared. They can clutch their purse when they get in the elevator. They can say I'm threatening. And they can, then that's just been said for weeks and months. To this camera and to this Flint, Michigan, they not gonna portray me as to who they think I am. When you got folks interrupting you, interrupting Gilchrist, talking about the mayor, and it's the same person wording, that's what had her going, I don't care if you feel my voice is loud, this is relevant. The order of doing business and the respect that I'm going to demand is relevant. And I know what I'm doing when I raise my voice, lower my voice. I know when I, what I'm doing when I'm setting past it. I'm tired of the same white folks talking about they scared of me, I'm threatening. Point of order, Mr. Mays is getting racial. That is you got racial rules. when you said you're scared and I'm if threatening. That's my point. I'm going to say it. Why is it that the white folks okay, are scared? Okay, you guys, I'm ruling you let out of order, this, Mr. Mays. Uh, let me do this, Mr. Mays. Let me do this. I mean, not out of order. I'm going to move these resolutions. But this, this elephant in the room ain't going to go away. Same folks. Point of order, Madam Chair. While you can make a motion during a special Don't order, make. it's inappropriate to move the resolutions while we're still on Don't a special make. order. And I still clearly had my name in the pool. There. I Something got the that's flow. Important that What's I have to say afterwards. And a motion is in order Mr. at any time. Bring. Motions and resolutions during the special okay, order. Okay, so... I'm gonna move. Um, um, Madam Chair, I could do that, but I ain't studying what Miss Fields talking about. Now, if you allow it, and I'm gonna, I'm, and that's for a second. This special order done went on way too long, way too long. I'm moving. I know it's your special order. I'm moving one eight zero three eight nine. They want it postponed. Okay, I I move to postpone one eight zero three eight nine. Madam Chair, point of order. It is inappropriate during a special order. It is inappropriate during a special order to make motions on the resolutions when we are still on the special order, and I still have something I want to say and was in the lineup to be able to. We'll be able to speak, but it does um, not have, go ahead. Point of order, Madam Chair. There's a motion on the floor. The proper order is there. Yes, is there a second? There's a motion on the floor. Ms. Carter has um, seconded that a motion, the motion to postpone. Is there any discussion? Mr. Gary, please. Um, Mr. Branch. Let's postpone it back to Finance Committee. I, I'd ask that it be postponed, and if I have to do an amendment to the motion, I would move to postpone it back to the Finance Committee. Sounds good, Ms. Fields. Now, I don't know 
why I'm not getting a response here, okay? But I believe, and I want to make note, this is something when we have a session with the parliamentarian, I believe it is improper to make a motion on the resolutions, which are on the agenda, which are after the special order, while we are still on the special order. And I get asked, I get asked for, if she saying she voting yes or no on the motion, or is she appealing you without appealing you, what's going on? I don't believe she has ruled anything. He, he just well, he because there was a motion on the floor. And there shouldn't be a motion on the floor, is my point. Mr. Freeman, can you just table the special order? We could have, but I didn't. We could have, but I didn't. We could have, but I didn't. You don't have to have, but I did, and I did it on purpose. So, can I ask for a motion to table this, even now that there's another substitute? You know what I mean? Substitute motion. Madam Chair, it actually, rather than having to table, a special order and move to resolutions. If I could have my two minutes to be able to say what I wanted to say, then we can move on to the resolutions. I believe this is a tactic by Mr. Mays to keep me from having the time that, well, that I'm allowed to do. Point of information. Is it possible that you could be believing wrong? Okay. So, Mr. Possible. Um, uh, but actually, the motion is going to be I was just going to move that we do something with this special order. I don't know what it should be. I don't know why I'm going to tell you. Let me, Madam Chair, <laughs> let me say this. We done beat that special order to death. I done made a motion. It's been moved and properly seconded. We can get to whatever she want to say and anything anybody else want to say. I want to know how they're going to vote on this motion that's properly before. It's unequal treatment to let Mr. Mays have his say and to not let me have mine. Okay, so, so let's just say for the record. Let me, no, no, no. Let me just say, what's your point of order, Mr. Mays? It ain't no unequal treatment to let folks vote. People been speaking since this meeting started. I'm tired of her making them attacks at you or me about some type of bias, race, or unequal treatment. That's my point. It ain't unequal. She's saying you unequal when you call on us. And let me There's just say for the record, the every person spoke once, except Mr. Davis, and except Ms. Winfield. Every person spoke once. Mr. Mays did not speak once. Mr. Mays did not speak once. Then I got to speak last. Mr. Mays allowed me to speak so that I could get my once. Mr. Mays is, hasn't spoken twice. He's spoken once, and he decided to move the resolution. You guys, that, that, that is not true. This is, but on, this, on his motion. He made a motion, you guys. And we don't have to make a big deal. You're going to have your time. And so, although we should table it, somebody make a substitute motion to table the motion. Not talking about it. Stop talking about it. No. Then I move that we table his motion. <laughs> she ain't got the flow. She can't just holler out Mr. Miss Galloway. Right. In, in regards to his motion, I personally want to move on to special order. But I am well aware that they both want to speak. Right. I, want to, I don't want to. But I don't want to skip them. So yeah, I will yeah, be voting right. no to postpone it. But I do want to move back. Don't vote to postpone it. That's you. That's how you are. And I just want to say for the record, don't. the postponing of this does, is not going to stop them from speaking. What they have decided is they want to speak instead of moving the resolutions forward. Everything is getting done, but it doesn't have to get done the way that they want to. They did have the floor, and this happens all the time. We do it when we're saying, um, I call for the um, motion and all those things. So come on, guys. We're almost at the end. And so is there any further discussion on postponing this to the next finance meeting? I just say for the record, I believe it's an improper motion. Thank you. All in favor of postponing this to the next finance meeting, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those that oppose, by hand. So it still fails. You got how many hands up? Well, well, yeah. Um, by roll call.
All that are in favor of postponing this motion say aye. All that oppose. So it is it, 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 yes. And, and this is saying by the, the administration uh, asked for this. This is their so resolution. Chair, so Councilman Lane. I would move 1830. Now it is in the field. You 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 uh, are yeah, 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 no. yeah. no. right. yeah. making yeah. 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 a motion. Yeah, I'm sorry. 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 Yeah, now, if you yes, want me to let her do it, let me do it. When yes, you call on her, let me in a just say something, and then you take the flow from me. Absolutely. Yes, sir, I ain't mad at you, no, but be very be careful of what some of these folks is attempting to do. Okay. That's why they don't like me, because I'm sharp as a tack. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Warren. in response to our announcing that we were not going to allow Hydra Act. What the state said was that um, perhaps you aren't extending uh, how the area of the Hydra Act, and perhaps you should do it in an additional area. In addition to sending the contractor inside the home, inside and outside, to look at what pipes were there. Now, before I ask you this question, Mr. Benzik, on Craig Drive, 3713 was the rest of the flag, it was HPD as a subcontractor to us. They never sent one person inside to check to see what the pipes were on the inside. Not one person. So, were you, first question for Mr. Benzik, were they then fulfilling what they were supposed to be doing? Not related to this, Ms. Field. So I will let you narrow your scope. 
it is to do with another contract with the same thing. It's not. That it is the same deal. You'll see what I have here. So, Mr. Wong and Mr. United, okay, number one, was that correct? And number two, is it correct that HDB is invoicing Stevens $1,100 for excavation and Stevens, in turn, is invoicing the city $1,700 next? And they didn't even do it correctly. When when was this done? Last week. Okay. Why not? First off, that's not WC Stevens. It's not a stake in a super. HDD is not a subcontractor. That's a method for installing this. They identify themselves as HDD. Okay. They're talking about Stevens. It's, it's, uh, I thought that was where super was working. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Corner. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, trying to start right We're wrapping it up. We're wrapping it up. An agreement between a contractor and a subcontractor has no bearing. The, the price that said contractor, Stevens, bid is what they should be paid. If they are paying their contract, their subcontractor less than that, that's a contract that's totally ir irrelevant. Okay, that's part of my question, but what I really want to get to under the question is, the state wrote a letter saying that if your hydro, in essence, if your hydro vacuum correctly with an inspection in and out, there's no need to do traditional excavation. That's wrong. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. In your opinion, that's incorrect, and I can be free to quote you with... Are you saying that the letter is incorrect or that statement is incorrect? I'm saying that statement's incorrect because the splices have clearly shown where we have identified copper in both hydrovac excavations that, and, and we've also found material inside the house. Sometimes what happens in the house is uh, kids are getting rambunctious, they hit the water line, it's all galvanized, it shears off. What they end up having to do, which is what we're instructing our in-home inspectors to do, is look to see if there's a patch in it. Because a lot of times the rock is probably a test. They go in to fix it, they have to cut the floor out, eventually find a piece of, of usable material that they can connect the copper to. So it may show us copper in the house, and it may show us copper at the um, actual curb stock, but there is a possibility, and I'm, we haven't found a lot. The problem is we have found some. So you, as you shared your opinion on this with the state and told the state that they are incorrect, that MDPQ is incorrect yeah. on this issue. They've been at the quick meeting. Also, to address your issue on the cars, the only question I could ask in that is are all, all our records correct? Mm -hmm. And I think the answer to that is on balance. Madam Chair, I'm part of that information. Wait, wait. Okay. How many more speakers have we got on this subject now? Only Ms. Worthy. She's the last one. Okay. Yes, Ms. Worthy. Uh, you know, I don't think we've ever heard a straight answer as to what Mr. Garrett asked and what uh, Stanley has asked. And I don't think we will, uh, because when you dig a hole, it doesn't matter how you dig it. It's just a hole that's dug. It doesn't matter how you get there. And so they can't give you a straight answer because then they would have to reveal maybe some ulterior motives. And I also would like to address the disrespect uh, in this room. And it's not just by me. I was screamed at twice, twice. Nothing was said. I said, why is Mr. Gilchrist here? He is nobody that deals with these lines. He is not the mayor's advisor that's paid. He made it, he is not. His official title is economic advisor. He's not even part of this. He may be an economic advisor that is paid to do just this, and maybe the grant people know that. That's, I guess, but I wanted to hear from A.E. Cobb and Mr. Vincent. That's what I was saying. And to be screamed at because of that, excuse me, to be screamed at because of that is inappropriate. Also, I've had to listen to Mr. Mays talk over speakers this whole entire special order. Nothing was said about that. If he's talking, he's saying something. 
So I think we need to reevaluate, and maybe Miss Galloway, you should watch some of the tapes as well. Uh, and I'm just saying, you, you, I think you're missing some things. Um, and, and that's all. I, I, I think that this is, um, I think that uh, this not allowing the hydro backing is, is actually a huge mistake. Uh, we are 98,000 alone uh, with Goyette so far, and a whole dog is a whole dog. So the fact that we had to go two hours over this, no, no movement I means council's going to have to do something, and I hope others realize uh, how serious this is. This is money that we did not account for, and the state's not paying. And we got no answer as to why a whole dog is not still a whole dog, except the run around. That's all. First of all, wait, wait, wait. I want to say for the record, Miss <coughs> Worthing, when you and Mrs. Winfrey Carter were going at it, I said. Mr. Carter, please, Miss Worthy, please. I'm going to give you guys both a warning, ladies, ladies, ladies. So maybe you didn't hear that. But I did, and I was fair to both of you, letting you both know that I was giving you both a warning, and that if you con continued, I would have Mr. Officer Metcalf remove you from the meeting. That is on record as well. Number two, Mr. Gilchrist was here at my request for my special order. And the reason why is because when Boyette approached me, Mr. Gilchrist was the one that gave the directive. And for the record, the title for Mr. Gilchrist was, if I'm not mistaken, Chief Advisor and Outreach Development Liaison. So, just so you know why he was here, is because I requested him to be here, because he was an, an adamant part of why the directive was done regardless of what we think. So I want to say for the record, he was here at my request. I appreciate him being here. This was my special order. That's why I was here. Miss Worthy, I've done everything I could to try and protect all of you against each other. I think I did a pretty good job. Mr. Guerra said for the record, he saw what you said that caused Mr. Mays to respond the way that he did. And so if we're going to begin to point fingers at each other, I'm just asking that we all take accountability for our own actions. I can only share to the best of my ability, and I really felt like I was fair to everybody today. I'm not perfect. I do review the tape. I'm getting better, though. I'm sure y'all know I'm getting much better. Yeah, but yeah. anyway, with that, Councilman Mays has the floor, and then Someone Mr. Briggs, I will get you. Actually, Mr. Briggs, uh, Mr. Mays was next on the list. To make a motion. Yeah. Actually, he was on the list to do what it is. Oh, he just, Mr. Mayor, well, his name was already down. Oh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, why is they still talk? Do you remember when he said that? Well, it trumps everything when you have the floor. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to say this. I'm ready to get out of this special affairs meeting and go to the regular meeting. The problem we got, the problem we got is folks is still a learning curve. It's a learning curve. Miss Worthing can leave, but she ain't learned that the mayor can appoint who she wants and she got to respect. She might not like the city attorney, she might not like Gilchrist, she might not like Steve Branch, but that's who been appointed and you going to respect. Thank you. So that's what Miss Worthing and Miss Fields ain't learned. I'm glad they don't. You gonna respect them. They blew an opportunity for us to have some folks at the table. Now she's still here and they gone talking about what you got to do with. It. Everybody in Flint at this table should know how things work. And I'm getting tired of Mr. Guerra pacifying them and rubber stamping. <laughs> We'll never get the five votes, Mr. Guerra, with that mess. Now, you might think it's funny. Come November, you might vote with them for new leadership. But I'll be rolling with the mofo. I haven't seen this before. I haven't seen it before. I can count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Or it can go another way. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not confused as to what's going on here. When we start condoning mess 
and wrongdoing, guess what I do? Call the mess out. Why am I trying to be cool with folks who saying folks don't mean nothing? Why am I not voting so we can move on trying to make Kate Fields an evil word and happy? Why do I do it if I'm Mr. Garrett? I want to be cool with them. I want them to talk about the mayor and give them, but when it comes to what I might can be a president, a vice, a finance chair, I want to stay cool with them. Because no, November comes. I done seen folks want to stay cool. Terry Nelson, Scott Kincaid, Juan Twez Davis, Vicki Van Buren, they was cool. And so I'm saying it now. Folks don't want to take care of business and vote right and wrong. They want to be cool with somebody. And they think that Mays is vulnerable. I'm probably the less vulnerable on this council. They can call me any name they want to call me. They can say they scared of me and I've been in council meetings for 30 years and ain't harmed a fly. But my literature, guess what it says? I am the voice. The voice of the first war. 1,400 votes strong. I ain't studied what he say when he out of line and he have been. I ain't studied what she say. I ain't studied what she say. I ain't studied what you say. And I'm watching the chair close. That's how I wrote. She can say it ain't relevant, but she sure thought it was relevant to sneak her little stuff in on Gil and me and anybody else and left out. Miss Fields didn't say, oh. She wasn't relevant. You buying into the wrong crowd, sir, and I got a big mouth. Votes mean something for me. How people vote. We had the Honorable Mayor Karen Weaver here, and they disrespected her. Thank you. Call her to the table. Mr. Gilchrist got a right to be at the table. That's who you requested. So I'm not going to be boxed into no corner. This council just don't understand what traditional excavation is, what the scope of a contract is, should we go four feet, five feet, ten feet? That's the issue. I understand it. Because I've been out there, I've been talking, and there, the handwriting was on the wall. The question wasn't asked to Rob Benzik, do you think hydrovac can be used? Go ahead, them telling you. Mr. Wong them and AECOM got a $5 million contract. Somebody say they're supposed to be managing it, but they respectful to hierarchy. Everybody who's been following this know that the order didn't come from the mayor and Mr. Gilchrist. Mm -hmm. You asking AECOM, you asking Mr. Parks. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is you had the chief negotiators in the room. And y'all let it get away with some mess before we could try to reach a compromise. I said from the beginning, do you think we can reach a compromise? And then it went in all kinds of directions. I applaud Ms. Wendy for checking, we call it in the hula, checking Ms. Word. Now don't come campaign in the hood, Gary, because I tell them you and want them votes and then get in here and won't help us check folks. Because I tell them, I ain't up here to compromise with folks. You know how fast this first year them went? And I'm finna wrap it up, Madam Chair. We in September, October, November, one year done passed. And you ain't figured out some of this foolishness? Keep rolling with them on a the compromise. Oh, I want to be cool with them. I think I'm going to do this. You are the man who do it. He who laughs last, laughs best. I'm not laughing. When it comes to my reputation, the mayor's reputation, Gill's reputation, W.T. Stevenson's reputation, Mr. Park's reputation, believe me, I'm going to go to bat. Folks ain't going to sit at this table and then blast out to the media what they want to make. Now, Mr. Garrett, and I'm going to make these motions. Through you, Madam Chair, and Mr. Garrett. You done sit here almost a year. You scared of me? That's a no. Well, why do they keep saying they scared like it's a threat? You buying into that? That's a game. 
That's the same lady who now, when I try to do what you did, especially order, she wants somebody else to chair. Because she ain't finding. That's the same lady who sent out emails <coughs> unethically, illegally, to mess up my career with president. Quit rolling with her. But you can roll with him. I'm going to see how you vote. I'm going to see what he keeps saying. I could clear up those guys. Eric May is the only one violated the five minute rule. That was so ridiculous. So, Madam Chair, enough of this mess. Enough of this mess. I wouldn't care, Mr. Griggs, if you time me. You should let me down with the way you talk and think in these meetings. So, if you showing me that, you still letting me down. You done let me down so many times. You called a male race. That let me down. Mm -hmm. Now you, now why are you talking? You can't handle it. Either. They said in the movie, you can't handle the truth. Yeah, you did. So I'm saying you remember the movie, you can't handle the truth. It means something. Ma'am, you might not know why I do it, but I do it because it's the same three who rolled together and talk and vote and try to make us look a certain way. I'm going to do it. That's been my politics with the other crowd, and it worked. And I ain't going to change my style. If people in the city need to know what's going on down here, I won't be on radio shows talked about. I'm out to take care of business, and I'm not going to have that mess without attempting to expose it and then just keep counting the vote. It's worked once. It's going to work twice. I don't know politics no other way. Madam Chair, I would move to reconsider 180389 because the administration wants to postpone. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is there a move and second it? Is there any discussion? Mr. In regards to Special orders, I mean, I may be postponed to reconsider that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll move it. No, I have to move it. Not to special orders. Okay, I was curious. Uh, so, no further discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair, we would need six votes to reconsider this. The motion to postpone as requested by the administration failed. So I'm doing a motion for reconsideration. We got six here. If it don't pass where we can reconsider and postpone it, I might move it to the floor and then we'll try to postpone it later. I'm, I'll be supporting the motion to reconsider. I can't vote. I was not here when the motion was made, No, it's, no, now that it's a reconsideration, it's a, it's a formal vote and it's happening for the first time. Okay. And, and, and for the record, would the administration like to say why they want their resolution to be Can I just say, um, actually, no. Um, when we jump to resolutions and the motion, the motion to postpone fails, and then you went back to the special order. Really, a the re motion to reconsider is when it's a definitive vote. Like, um, it didn't fail on the floor, it failed to move. Madam so, really, you can get to a substitute. Madam Chair, if a motion on the floor yeah. is properly made to reconsider, a motion fails. Okay. All in favor? Uh, I have a question on this reading. Reconsideration means it failed to be postponed the way the administration wanted. And so now we're asking for reconsideration in hopes that we can get enough votes to postpone it the way they, they wanted it. And so reconsideration means it's brought before us as if it's happening for the first time. Madam Chair, so that you the way the way the 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 we, we asked him for a yes vote. We need six votes in order to reconsider. If we get six votes rather than five or one or four or two, then we'll come back with a motion to postpone it. It seemed like folks wanted to not postpone it because we were still on a special order and so some of them voted in protest not to postpone it as requested. So hopefully the group of six will reconsider then we'll come right back with a motion to postpone as we did before. Does that answer your question? Well, I'll probably vote no because I want to come. I want to do something with this special order. It needs to move somewhere. We are going to move it, but it does not need to. But we can't get it. We, we can. Do with this we can do. We can do everything else and still go back to that. Okay. And so, 
All in favor of reconsideration of this motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those that oppose, any abstentions? So the reconsideration passed. Madam Chair, Captain if you Mayor. don't do the special order, you're going to yes. leave it on for next special affair, but you're going to drop it with a without a bit, you know, you I'm can order that, that don't yeah, require yeah, a motion. Yeah, right. So if they hung up on it, what you gonna do with it? I'm what gonna, gonna do? send it to another community because uh, Then it's a fine act of government or either one. Yeah, yeah. Can I send it to government or not? Yeah. Governmental office. Oh, I agree. So he ain't gonna know how to say it, right? He's gonna, be, he gonna be all <laughs> passive and they gonna <laughs> run over. Finance. Yeah, you know, to finance, yeah. No, I want it. I want the golden child to try to prove okay? with these. Yeah, with that. I won't mess with it. They'll run over him. Council Mays, don't tell me about it. 10 minutes. 10 minutes, you guys. Okay, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. I would move 180389 postponed to finance committee. Yeah. I'll second it. We move and second it. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, any attention? Remove. Hey, Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Griggs, did you hear what we did with the special order? We moved it to uh, our finance committee. Correct. Okay, Madam Chair, I would move 180428 um, and 